Welcome to the Geek 101 Podcast, episode 255, Anime 101. It's over 9,000! I'm Mario Rada. And I'm Andy Chan. And today we are talking all about anime. We're going to get into some categories, some subgenres. We're going to talk about anime in the West, anime out East, and uh, just a lot of, maybe even give you some, some recommends. But first we have one of the biggest pieces in geekdom ever, and one that um, I am was sure really happy to hear about. Uh, <laughs> what is that piece of news? All right, we have confirmation that something fabled is real. We now know that the Snyder Cut is real, and it is coming out only on HBO Max sometime in 2021. Okay, so here is my here is my initial thought, especially to the way you phrased it. You said the Snyder Cut is real, right? Yeah, but it's not real yet. <laughs> it's not, right, that's the point, right? It's not real. It's not. It's being made because of the circumstances we are in. And I think mm-hmm. anybody with, with a, a modicum of critical thinking, um, which means that people not in the release of Snyder Cut movement, should figure that if this thing was already existed, it is not coming out in 2021. It's right. coming out now. Uh, now, now, Ariel, I I do have an impression of somebody that I I'd like that I believe uh, had a reaction to this project's news, and I want you to guess what famous person this is. Okay. All right. Mother, I just got to direct a new Batman movie, and those are are bringing out the old Batman movie. Is is this some? Uh... Is this what's his name, Matt Reeves? Yeah, yeah. Can, I mean, seriously, can you imagine Matt Reeves? Right. This is both him and Robert Pattinson. Like, this is taking away from what they have now. That Justice League cut comes out the same year as the Batman. I definitely think that the hardcore Snyder cut audience is going to irrationally latch on to that quote-unquote cut because they don't find Robert Pattinson to be the right type of quote-unquote masculine uh, <laughs> to, to latch on to yeah, for their yeah, beloved I, Batman. <laughs> I'm, I'm so – I feel so bad. And I also feel kind of bad for Ben Affleck too, right? He was done. He had washed his hands. And now it's coming right back up. Like, yeah, we we do know that they are they're allowed to ask the cast to come back for voice work only. Obviously, I don't. <laughs> Is it going to be a, a whole movie of us seeing just their backs? <laughs> so this is so ridiculous because the problems with that movie, the biggest problems with that movie, uh. I don't think have anything like cannot be fixed by uh, a singular vision. Um, I think the main plot points were Zack Snyder's. I think the movie, you know, in a weird way, Andy, that movie's probably a little better on the whole if Zack Snyder just made it because you don't have these crazy, um, like any time that Superman and the Flash are together, you can tell those were like reshoots. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh yeah, those are like Joss Whedon reshoots, like uh tonally. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's weird. I I'm actually looking forward to it just from a uh, like a, an academic, you know, perspective, just right. seeing what they can do and how it's different. That that's great. I really like that idea. It's just yeah. weird that they're dumping like what, like probably thirty or twenty million dollars into A movie that, I mean, the world's moved on. It's been almost three years. Yeah, it'll be four by the time, by the time it comes out. That movie is is not very successful. Uh, I I think it is better than BVS. Oh, undoubtedly, it it is it is not a terrible movie. It's just not a good movie either. Right, and it's not. It's one. 
I just don't. I just I wasn't a fan of the the backlash. I wasn't a fan of the fan behavior. I can see why people think it's going to be better. There is a case it will be better. But I don't think people will understand that Warner Brothers doesn't do this if we're in the state that we are in. They don't do this if they don't have an HBO Max Warner Brothers-esque streaming service to promote. Right. I, I think the, I think a lot of the fans were wanting like a theatrical re-release. That would have never happened. Uh, I, I think it's safe to say it's kind of a perfect storm of circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to watch it, but overall, you know, wh- whatever, just whatever. Like it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Ariel, we will do a review when it comes out. I think it, I would have to see what initial reviews are. Okay. If initial reviews are, you know, that it's a 10%, you know, it's if it's less than a 10% change, that I don't think it's worth it to put myself through that nonsense. Mm-hmm. If they were like, yeah, this is like a 30% difference as to, you know, and it's more tonally focused, I think it's, then I think it's like worth it, right? Um, but if this feels like a Lord of the Ring extended edition, I don't think that's that's like even worth the, th- the time. Um, what are your thoughts on, on the fact that it'll be split up into like quote unquote episodes? Uh, that tells me that, you know, the one hour, 50 minute Justice League. Uh, I, I think it's probably for the better. I just hope that those episodes all come out at once. And not a kind of like. Put it out one month, kind of hear what fans think about, and then tweak the uh, the next part. Right. I I don't want I don't want that in particular. I do think it's going to come out over a two month period, so that the people who signed up for HBO Max for Justice League, whatever Snyder cut, will have to get two months of HBO Max. <laughs> It's like the per- it's like it's like the perfect idea. I think if they're like, "Hey man, if you can stretch this out to 2 months worth of content, if you can do 6, if you can do, I don't know, if we can do half one month, half the next, you know, 2 hour and a half episodes, like we'll do it." Like I I just totally think that they would kind of stoop that low to do it. Uh oh, uh Ariel, you are more cynical than me, but yes, I <laughs> can totally see them trying that. I can totally see them Trying some other things. Warner Brothers, as far as studio execs go, seems to be the most devious and underhanded of the executives. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, yeah. I have no, I have no faith in in the rich people behind the scenes that aren't creatives behind the camera. I have no faith in their ability to be able to help tell a story. And I, you know, whatever. Uh, but let's, let's move on, Andy, I guess, since we're done there with our main topic, we are talking about anime. Now, um, can you tell me what anime is, Andy? Okay. Well, anime as a term, uh, it, it is basically short for animation. Japanese language has a lot of, uh, they adopt a lot of foreign words and just kind of use them phonetically and anime is short for animation within japan and within the japanese language anime stands for all forms of animation but outside of japan anime is really used to denote a certain kind of animation that has a japanese origin um i like to think of it like champagne or bourbon where if it's not made in a certain area, it's not that thing, right? If champagne isn't made in Champagne, France, it's actually just called sparkling wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I, I would agree with you. I think there are people who would disagree with us. For example, the prime example, the best example that's in everyone's minds is if you watched Avatar The Last Airbender, the animation style and even subject matter is one that you would traditionally find on a Japanese anime. But it's not. It's not anime. It's made by Americans in America. 
And so, like what you said, bourbon, whiskey, scotch, it's not anime. I, so there are people out there who make American comics who call them anime. I, I just think it's, no, it's 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 from a certain place. You cannot call, uh, like 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 you said, you can't call bourbon whiskey. It's just it's just not right. Right, and that doesn't. You know, this isn't a case where. Uh, you know, a sparkling wine is not the store brand version of champagne. There is no quality differentiation in these terms. Yeah, it's it's right. Uh, and I I think that that's important because you know people people tend to think like if you say something like oh well this it's not really anime or oh it's not really a champagne or armagnac or cognac or, or whatever. The there's this implication that it's not as good, but that that isn't the case. Uh. It's just about the origin and uh, general team behind right. the the product. Yeah, I, I mean a simple a simple comparison even is if you look at like the I don't know if if you look at the character Hyperion over in Marvel um, or or something of that sort where he like oh yeah he he's designed like he's from DC comics and he has powers like he's from DC comics and his origin is from like he's DC comics but who's published him marvel it, it doesn't matter what he looks or smells or feels like he's not from uh DC so he's not DC uh, it's it, you know it's 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 plain and simple anime comes from japan now uh, so we got that first very basic question out of the way. So in terms of anime 101, I think it's important to, to tell the audience that traditionally anime series are adopted from the Japanese version of what's called of, of, uh, comic books or graphic novels called manga. Um, this is not true for all anime. Um, but in Japan, it's, this is a very, very specific sequence in which a serialized sequential, sequential art story is directly adapted to a weekly television show. Andy, I think the most popular, all time historically popular manga to anime, um, would be Dragon Ball Z. Would you th- think that's right? Uh, I would agree with you on that one as far as uh, Western. Uh, yes. Yes. Western. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it, it's hard. Go ahead. It, it's it, hard. It, I, I, I think the real quick, many people would want to say Pokemon and, and there's absolutely the, the arg- Pokemon is bigger, more popular than Dragon Ball Z. Pokemon did not start out as a manga or an anime. It started out as the game and that's the differentiation here. Right, right, and another another uh, common source of anime, particular, particularly in what we have today, you have light novels in Japan, which are basically YA novels. Right, they they are text based. Mm. Uh, they usually cover uh, many different volumes uh, for a, a length of time. Uh. So you do have anime adaptations of those, and you also have anime adaptations of what are called visual novels, which are video games that uh, are mostly text-based. Mm-hmm. So I think that's it's important to differentiate here because I have, you know, except for the recent string of DC animated movies, traditionally this this was not a thing. The closest thing we got to a comic book page to television screen adaptation would be X-Men the animated series. Um but I don't I don't think the Spider-Man series took the same level of panel to to screen inspiration that it did. Okay. Almost that one to one. Even X-Men it's a, it's had had such different like the character of Morph was not a prevalent character on those X-Men teams. They did take certain storylines piece for piece, but in anime, Andy, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it's been a long time since I, like the last anime I, I watched that I had intimate knowledge of the manga would probably be Naruto. Um, 
at least in that, that those first two arcs, those first couple of chapters slash episodes, it's a one for one adaptation from the comic book story drawings, illustrations to the, the animation that we see on screen. Right. And uh, part of part of the reason why that is, is it helps get the anime teams, the animation teams used to drawing on model. Hmm. Yeah. Right. And, and really kind of grasping uh, early on. I, I think it's X-Men like episode one. Like there are some terrible, terrible drawings in that. Um, you can you can look up on YouTube people breaking down like how how the characters go completely off model, how they don't look anything like the uh, the artist originally drew them. And for anime in particular, usually you have uh, it, it's usually made in staggered teams. So like one team works on episode one, another team works on episode two, another team works on episode three, and they need to kind of get used to drawing precisely. Uh, what's called on model characters, which make it look good. Uh, you know, so that's, that is something that is the case early on, at least. Sure. Sure. Yeah. It, it is interesting because manga is so much more popular to the Japanese population than, than American comics are here to the, uh, to the American population, of course, in a, in a weird way, there's there's a bit of a. I'm curious as to like how many people at this point read more, read manga, compared to how many people read American comics. Now, uh, Ariel, uh, you know, I actually, I there there is a reason why in Japan it's a lot more common, and one of the re- the reasons is uh, actually cost. Ha- have you ever handled a Japanese volume of manga? Uh, in terms of a collected volume of an arc or a weekly shonen, just just like a uh, of a volume, like a you know volume forty one of One Piece or something. Yes, yeah, I have I have I've, a bunch. Yeah, right, right, right. It, the The quality of paper in in Japan that they use for those is so much lower than the quality of paper we print out on ours. Hmm. Uh, yeah, and and it's incredibly cheap. Like you can go to the these used manga stores in Japan, and I've been to a few where you just buy a volume for a dollar or a hundred yen. Right. So if you're listening, it's it's almost like um, if you're reading a an American comic book, which if you're listening to this, you probably have at some point. The paper is is like a magazine quality. It's in color. It's got the lamination almost to it. Right. A Japanese uh, manga, especially in Japan, is feels more like american newspaper paper uh maybe a shade better two shades better but but your good point andy it's just it's just so much cheaper and of course the the way in which they release weekly um like a shonen uh shonen jump a weekly shonen jump of like 500 to 800 pages is about three or four bucks yeah uh, and for for americans a single issue of batman numbers 700 750 whatever is is four dollars on its own that 23 page comic on its own um th- there's a big difference but we're i think it's important to talk manga when we're talking about anime because the the meteoric rise of anime stemmed from the the big three manga books right and we'll mention those right here those are naruto which you're, if you're listening to this i imagine everyone i imagine you know what it is uh, Bleach, which um, is pretty popular, and then One Piece, which is the biggest manga in the world. Um, but those three, specifically Naruto, led to an entire several generations of people loving anime. Um Okay, so let's let's get into the the categories of manga, and we'll shoot those off into the the genres of of animes that they that that they stem into. Andy, um, the first one here. What is the first and the biggest, most popular category um, of manga that leads to the most popular, biggest shows in anime? All right, this is shonen. Uh, shonen is short for like young boy. Uh, it is a high action 
uh, style. It goes for a very young male demographic, usually 12 to 18, but let's be honest here, uh, because we are eternally young children, it's really 12 to 70. Uh, <laughs> yeah. At, at uh, this rate, it, it is close probably to like 12 to, to 50. Is like the, the the way that certain when in America, right? When when anime really blew up is around that time where people in their twenties are now closer to fifty. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that that hurt my heart. But yes, uh, that that's kind of the way it is. Uh, this is why it's called Shonen Jump. It's just young young boys jump. Um, <laughs> Magazine for young boys. Yeah, uh, this one Shonen is the the category that uh, Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, One Piece, Bleach all fall into. Each of these categories has a has its own weekly magazine that releases with new issues or chapters of the um. Of the most popular manga. That's why we we are breaking this up into these categories. A Shonen Jump magazine will have how many how many uh, different stories are in a Shonen Jump magazine? Andy, you would know more than uh, me. I think ten to twelve different different uh, chapters of of various things. Right, there might be five to eight different genres of story in those twelve. Um, 12 different uh, series. Okay. Uh, the next one here we have, am I saying this right? Despite me being the Asian one and you being um, the, the white American uh, Seinen. Uh, yeah. Seinen is fine. Okay. Seinen means youth. It is uh, the demographic. It is, it is geared towards is teens to thirties. But like Andy said, it's probably closer to 14 to 50. Um, violent. And sometimes erotic or mature themes often lie in seinen. Um, the most popular one right now, Andy, both manga and and uh, anime, would probably be One Punch Man. Right, right. And also with these, you get a kind of interesting thing where you have slightly mature, more mature tones, uh, but you also have deconstructions of prior. Uh, you know, of uh, other genres, right? These are they these are uh, a, a youth that are they're getting older. They're kind of getting jaded with the same old tropes. So a, a lot of these, like One Punch Man, will attempt to deconstruct and put new spins on previously more lighthearted affair. If you are if you're an avid comic book American comic book reader. A shonen magazine would traditionally be the Spider Man or a Miles Morales or a Miss Marvel comic, and a seinen book would be something like Saga or uh, Ryan Otley and um, what's his face's name? Uh, whatever the the Invincible comic book. I think Kirkman. I think it, Kirkman. Thank you. I always forget Kirkman. He's the more famous one. Invincible is is a weird companion piece to One Punch Man. You ever think about that? Oh yeah, all the time. It yeah. it works perfectly. Uh another thing to point out is with the way that uh Japanese language works, the symbols do take a little bit of extra effort to read. Uh most of the time when I've when I've been into Japan or whatever, people will carry around uh kanji dictionaries to help them figure out or have apps on their phone to help them read the symbols they're not certain what they are. Uh so it's uh Seinen, it the amount of knowledge you have to have to read it is a little bit more than the amount of knowledge you have to read to uh, a shonen. Hmm. You know, and that and that is just another thing that kind of separates it out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the next category we have here is called shojo, which is the you know the the girls equivalent to shonen. Um, it usually focuses more on romantic relationships and emotions as opposed to just you know hard nosed stubborn. Hero's Journey type stories. Uh, Card Captor Sakura and Fruits Basket are a couple of, and I guess like Sailor Moon, are a couple of shoujo type anime shows that you might have heard of. Um, Andy, for, for the most part, I'm just going to try to be saying like the most popular 
animes. And so if you're a big anime fan, this episode might not be for you. I, I've got I've got some some recommends later on for people who are a little bit more uh, elitist about their anime <laughs> choices. So. Sure, yeah. What's the last category here, Andy? Uh, last category is Jose, which is just uh, the the main demographic is for women uh, older than eighteen. These are going to be slightly more erotic, sometimes slightly more trashy, sometimes just dealing with uh, social issues within Japan. I, I'm not really too familiar with any specific anime that do fall into this category off the top of my head. Yeah. Yeah. Me neither. It's, it's tough. The categories for manga are best reflected in the categories for novels, right? For fiction novels, as opposed to like TV shows, you would never, most people don't categorize TV shows and cartoons through this lens. Uh, they instead do it through genre. So Andy, why don't we go through a couple of these genres? All right. So you've got your shonen battle genre, which is the big one. This is your Dragon Ball Z Naruto Bleach. This is a genre that focuses on fights between a main protagonist and a villain and overcoming those fights through strength and using different, typically using different magical power systems. Yes. These are the exciting ones. Right. They also, it's the same exact thing. They do them not through just battle, but like not through physical combat, but also through sports. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's almost the same exact thing, except one is fighting and one is sports. Right. Uh, and recently, the, the, the shonen battle genre has starting to peel off a bit and do things that are based on battles that are not... Um, are not directly battles uh, of physical capability or anything like that. They're uh, like Kaguya Sama Love is War, which is a battle anime about two people trying to manipulate the other into confessing their love for uh, love for each other. So, <laughs> what's the name of that one again? Kaguya Sama Love is War. It is on Hulu. Please give it a shot. It is hilarious. Um, what's what's the next couple of you, Andy? Okay, you've got isekai. This is probably the biggest genre right now. Isekai is a genre where a person is transported to another world, and it is usually a fantasy world. It is usually, um, it is usually you know like a, a just a very basic JRPG, uh, you know, swords and sorcery type world, and that's how it goes. It they. Sometimes it's within a video game. Uh, Sword Art Online is probably the most popular one, but you have other anime like Overlord or Konosuba, which do the same thing. And uh, this has gotten to the point, this is so popular, that with uh, one of this year's newest uh, isekai, it, there's actually a plot point that they, the gods of this world pick men from japan to use because isekai is so popular that when they like teleport these young men away to their fantasy world they don't have to explain what the deal is right, right they're, they're just, just like yeah. hey you're in a fantasy world and they get it because in japan isekai is so popular yeah <laughs> so that that's a big one i, I noticed a lot I, sword art online there's one called solo leveling which a lot of people have recommended to me i did not like it but it is easily recommendable this particular genre i remember first seeing in maybe not first seeing but it was very prominent in that arc of hunter x hunter hmm. yeah uh dot hack is the big oh that's another start. one yeah dot hack is another big one yeah um, I will say that uh, some of some of these are very good and and very funny, and some of them are uh, complete and utter trash, designed to get a lot of money out of their listeners or out of their uh, viewers. So be careful when you're picking an isekai; you might waste your time. Yeah, not all they're not not they're not all equal. Um, a couple uh, one here that is pretty simple, and it's a term I've I've seen originate from manga and anime and it's called slice of life yeah slice of life this is this is uh it's a genre that just f 
follows people going about their day, going about their uh, experience and world. Um, there's not necessarily anything more. This is just like a, it's not quite a melodrama. It's, it's not nearly as high stakes. It's just pleasant to watch. Yeah, it's almost like a de-dramatized sitcom genre. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It 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 isn't going for laughs. There is often a lot of very organic comedy, but it's really just a character study in these situations. Uh, if you like this idea, there is a anime I watched last year, I think, called "Oh Maidens in Your Savage Season," which is just a coming of age story about a a bunch of girls in a literature club and it is amazing and it's sweet and it should be available on Hulu. So, Oh Maidens in Your Savage Season. Okay. Uh, what's the next category we have here, Andy? Okay, Magical Girl. This is your Sailor Moon. This is your version, your your power fantasy that young men go through with a Dragon Ball or a Bleach or a Naruto, but with girls. Uh, you know, this is the the parody where you see someone pulling out a wand or something and spinning and changing uh, to a superhero outfit. This is Sailor Moon. This is Card Captor Sakura. This is so much anime that is aimed at and appeals to girls. Um, they're yeah, it's not necessarily my cup of tea, but it's not it's not bad, and it's you know. It has its uh, its classics. Yeah. The next one we have here is gag manga, which is kind of what it, it implies. It's it's meant to be funny. It's not meant to make sense. It's meant to be humorous and, and um, silly. In a weird way, One Punch Man is a gag manga. It's one of the most action-packed, brilliantly drawn gag mangas slash animes um i keep saying manga but do we do we have any other examples of gag animes uh one one i would throw out is uh bo 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 oh yes the i remember the, the guy with the afro like a yellow afro yeah yeah it uh, you, you, you know it's it's just designed to be funny uh another one that Kind of, kind of works for this. is actually on Netflix. Uh, it's called Araitsuku. Can you give a quick synopsis uh, of it? I don't know much. I don't know much about it. I just know it's. Uh, oh, sorry. It's Agretsuko. Uh, it oh is, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. It is um, kind of like a Hello Kitty, but mixed a little bit with a uh, a Rick and Morty kind of. Kind of thing. It's just uh, adult. It's a comedy about a cute little mascot after they're all grown up and have to deal with the real world. Yeah. Uh, another one that I want to say here. I don't know if this turned into an anime. Let me do a quick check. Um, but Ranma, Ranma one half. Have you ever heard of this, Andy? Oh, oh yeah, dude. Yeah. It's one of like the older. Uh, classic animes. It is an anime, yeah. Basically, <laughs> this is this is a hundred percent a gag comedy type um anime. This there is a secret, um, like hidden area of pools where if you fall in it, you get the weird ability to turn into something. Do you remember what the trigger is? Uh yeah, it's uh hot water. Hot water, okay. Um or cold uh, sorry, cold, cold water, water and then hot water back and forth. So the main character Ranma, when he gets tr- he's he's this great like martial artist wants to be a great whatever. When cold water because he fell into the spring, this pond, when cold water touches him he turns into a girl. Um his dad when cold water touches him he gets turned into a panda and if hot water touches them <laughs> they turn back into their original forms. Uh the it is technically like a martial arts anime, but there is so much comedy in regards to what happens that I, I think it's it's you know it's very easily put into like that comedy aspect there because 
one character, his rival, like Ranma's rival falls in love with his, his girl version and somebody else falls in love with the boy version. And, and then eventually like all of his friends end up have like end up turning into different things when cold water is splashed on them. It, it, it's it, the more like complicated and convoluted a concept is, the more likely it is to be a, a gag manga. Uh, Andy, you maybe would know this, and I wouldn't. What category is the the JoJo anime? Oh, uh, that is just straight up shonen, dude. Okay, I don't, I don't know, I don't know anything about it. Yeah. Uh, so JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is one of the better versions of this. Uh, it starts out as uh, f- the the manga was created in the eighties, and it it's a manga that follows the joe star family as through uh through generations as they deal with different things uh, it has a lot of a lot of funny moments and it is uh very against tropes it, it it will destroy tropes in a heartbeat but it is very very um shown in okay cool uh, I, I i recommend it i just don't recommend the first season to anybody can you start from the second Yes, yes. Uh, so one of the things about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is it's actually it's broken up into different. Um, well, they they just called parts, right? So uh, and that's because it takes place over generations. So every you know forty or fifty chapters or whatever, that story ends and the next part starts, and that part starts eighty years later. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So season two of JoJo's. That's when it starts getting really good. All right. The next category we have or genre we have is is war. Uh, I what recent- is it good for? <laughs> I recently recommended a war manga, which recently got a, a season or two of an anime called Kingdom. This one, the, the most famous war mangas, Andy, please add if I forget them, are Kingdom. Which is about the Warring States Chinese uh, China's Warring States period, Vagabond, which deals with historical Japan, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Berserk is a more fantastical yeah, war. It's, it's very fantastical, but I do want to note that Berserk is uh, the best-selling product uh, from uh, Dark Horse. It's also on indefinite hiatus. Uh, it, it goes back and forth. It, it just had a chapter come out. Did it really? I think so. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, Berserk is the number one selling product on Dark Horse. So if you're familiar with Dark Horse's publishing line, Berserk manga is the number one seller they have, period. Yeah. So Berserk has had two, it's had, it's had two seasons of anime or two different times it's been tried to adapt mm-hmm. the 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 manga the manga no, I'm thinking of something else vagabond vagabond is on indefinite hiatus um i you don't hear a ton of battle of war or epic war animes being created i think i think there's a strain on the the animation studios to get what needs to be done from page to screen yeah, yeah, that's why it's a big deal when they finally get translated and when they fail terribly like Berserk did. Yeah, that's tough. That's that's tough. I, I mean, they're, they're very popular, but it's it's not the easiest thing. I think the, the the last, um, not the last, but one of the big ones that that Andy and I are not, are not super well versed in, um, because it's so intimidating is is Mecha, Mecha anime, um, the most famous. Yeah, the most famous mecha anime series would probably be Evangelion, Neon no, Genesis Gundam. Evangelion. I, well, here's the thing: is there a singular Gundam run? Ooh, that is no. more f- no, right? That's what I'm saying. No. Neon Genesis Evangelion is, is is an older anime. It's it's a little convoluted. It doesn't end well, but many people love it, and it is quite. Um, it was very, very influential. Gundam no, is Ari- the, the Gundam is the most recognizable name. Yeah, Ariel, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and give you two instances that back my idea up. 
Of right. Gundam? Yes. Okay. That Gundam is one. Ready Player One. Sure. Yeah. And two, there is an episode of Archer where uh, Archer makes a joke about building a Gundam. <laughs> Need to watch Archer. Uh, I think in regards to mecha anime, I think it is certainly the most popular name. I, I don't think that's debatable. There is a, I think it's light, like life scaled, life size scaled Gundam statue in Japan, which is on kind of my bucket list of things to visit. The problem with Gundam anime, and we can have an entire episode on this alone. You have no idea where to start. You have no idea where the timelines work, where the plot threads go. I feel like, uh, what was his name? Charlie Day in, in, in Always Sunny. Yeah. With um, the, the conspiracy. <laughs> right, the cork board where he's like, uh, uh, Gundam is huge. It's one of the, the biggest franchises in, in Japan, maybe the world in terms of animation. Um, but I'm intimidated as to what the heck do I watch? Um, but ultimately, Gundam is—they just look super cool. Uh, yeah, any, I'd, I'd want to pilot a Gundam. <laughs> yeah. Um, Why don't you close us out here with the last, uh, the last few? All right, all right. All right. So the the last two we have are your harem, which is typically just a a male fantasy about multiple women trying to get with the same male character. Uh, it's viewed it normally as pretty trashy. Not much more to say. It's just a rom-com situation uh, that's a different kind of power fantasy for young men. And Moe, which is just a genre of anime described often as cute girls doing cute things. Yes. So both of these things are traditionally, and of course you have the adult film version of anime called Hentai, which we will not be getting into here. But But it is art. (laughs) But those things are traditionally geared towards a type of fan called an otaku and uh otaku is a phrase that japanese people and american people and people throughout the world i suppose have co-opted to 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 kind of define themselves by their interest in anime and manga yes yeah no? it, it's it's really just about being more of a nerd but a Japanese nerd or a nerd in Japanese things. Right, right. Uh, if you if you were a Japanese person and you were an otaku, that would just be pretty much just what we are, geek, right? Yes. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's a, the Western equivalent of calling ourselves geeks. It's fine. Right. Outside, though, yeah, it means it's the particular kind of nerd that likes Japanese stuff. Uh, also, uh, weeaboo is another popular term for them, but right, perhaps yeah, that is probably what is more in regards to the subgenres we talked about just before. Y- yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, otaku's. Yeah, o- otaku's. I-, I guess it's just another word for geek or nerd. Um, I'm wary of people who call themselves of American people who call themselves otaku's because it it does have a sense of kind of cultural appropriation to it. An obsessiveness with Japanese culture that I am frankly not comfortable with. Um, so if you're listening to this and you consider yourselves one, maybe take and you're not Japanese, maybe just like take a step back and take a look at what you're saying. Right, just just call yourself a dirty weeb, <laughs> or just say yeah, I'm just a you know I'm just a, I'm just a geek who loves Japanese things. It, 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 to me, this is almost identical to the the conversation about anime and what is what is and what is not anime. Uh, it's a very similar conversation. Um, couple of questions we're going to ask and then we'll, we'll get out of here. We had, this conversation went pretty long. Um, wh- a lot of people, myself included, will read manga and not watch anime. Um, for me, for me, I, in terms of if, if a show, if a property, if a franchise has an anime and a manga, I want the manga because it can be consumed faster. There is no filler, which is basically um, filler arcs exist usually in anime and not many other types of things. They are episodes created by people who are not the original creator of the story of the manga. 
um, in order to fill time when trying to keep a weekly schedule. Uh, I want only the story that comes from the original voice, good or bad. Um, but Andy, you, you tell me that things are changing in regards to anime. Right, right. So one of the things about anime, one of the, the basic ideas here is that anime used to be done on a weekly basis, which meant that uh, like a Dragon Ball Z or a Naruto or many, many others would come out once a week on the same day, which means the production schedules were tight Mm -hmm. and quality tended to lack a good deal. Plus, you have the issue where slowly the anime adaptation will catch up with its source material. So they do all these small little changes to pad out the timing, make it go longer to make, uh, you know, a one chapter last, maybe an entire episode instead of uh, two chapters to one episode. So yeah, there there's the problem. And the anime industry, uh, is notorious for one treating its animators terribly and its manga artists. R- right, right. Uh, and, uh, what's been starting to happen is a trend towards doing seasons and just seasons. So uh, My Hero Academia is a great example of this where they will do just a season of My Hero Academia and then wait however long it needs to wait for the source material to get far enough and have enough content to publish another season later. This leads to a much higher quality and a uh, much more just beautiful product when it's finished uh there's more time to flesh it out it looks much better yeah this is the 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 manga and anime that i loved so much growing up were of course dragon ball z one piece naruto even bleach i think i've watched more bleach anime than i have uh one piece because i just love the form of one piece that i was consuming the animation would get shoddy uh, the stories wouldn't make sense. The fillers. Um, by getting rid of this particular problem, you are allowing the quality of your anime to more closely match that of your manga, which makes it so much easier and so much better. So much, so uh, so much easier for people like me or, or anyone really to to really consume and to read a story in, in a really great form, as opposed to a watered down version of it. Uh, this. I, I, you know, this, this is, I think, one of the biggest quality of life changes that to happen, um, in, in anime. Um, but let's, you know, let's talk about anime in, in the West. And by the West, of course, I mean the Americas. I mean, in Europe, uh, to a degree west of Japan. Um, Andy, would you agree with me that Anime adventure or shown in anime characters have greater staying power in the American pop culture conversation than Western cartoons and adventure animation. Uh, I think yes. I, I think at least the ones we grew up with. Yes, and so the the example I like to give is that. You will never find an original Western cartoon character, um, y- you know, appear in the in a Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade float. Y- you can't say that about Spider Man and Superman and or Batman, who characters who would but are originated seventy years ago in comic books, um. You can say it about, you know, Goku from Dragon Ball Z. Well, who, SpongeBob got his own Macy's blow up doll. Well, I, I meant like uh, adventure. Okay, um, adventure, yeah. Right. So Americans love adventure. We love action. We love superheroes. We love fights. We love all that stuff. The versions of the the comic book characters we see on those floats are not the ones that that are tied to those shows. It's it's a strange thing. Um, the X Men animated series, the Spider Man animated series, the Batman animated series only ran for a couple of years. Um, Dragon Ball Z debuted in like the mid nineties and is 
one of the biggest things in the world right now. Mm-hmm. Um, Batman the Enemy series is not in the public conscious in the way that is. Do we do we know why? Well, uh, so I I have a, a theory on this. I think for for one thing, Dragon Ball Z in particular, and all of these animes ha- uh, f- focus on serialized storytelling. Yes, right. You you tell a, a complete story from episode one to the last episode, where in our you know your your Batman the animated series, you can kind of jump in on almost any episode and be fine. There's a yes. few two part episodes, but for mm-hmm. the most part, you can just jump in and be fine. If you are a fan of Dragon Ball Z, you do not just jump in somewhere, right? You go through the entire thing, right? Which which leads us to stakes that develop over time and allow people to really remember specific moments. People remember Goku turning into a Super Saiyan, Mm -hmm. right? They remember these landmark things. Uh, I mean, I only have to say Rock Lee versus Gaara for two thirds of of weebs to just go, just drop their head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we have moments in the serialized storytelling. I, uh, I think it would be more accurate to compare these kinds of anime and the cultural relevance uh, to like a Harry Potter, where you have an entire world built that does have a story, does have moments that people remember. Yeah, that that's a good one. I think Avatar: The Last Airbender, I think, is proving to also be one of those stories. Uh, but yes. it only it only ran three seasons, and so it did not have. Um, not only did it only run three seasons, when they tried coming out with a sequel, it was not approached with the same level of storytelling, organization, and uh, mindset that the first one was. Right, three seasons, set story. We know it beginning to end. Korra was not approached with that sense of uh, a vision. Um, so it did, it was just not, not, not as successful. I think partly due to, due to that. Um, I think you have to tie back the most famous animes to the way that mangas are produced in Japan and how, and how, uh, people latch on to them. I think, I think Andy in, I think in 20 years, we're going to look at indie comics. Comics from Image, Dark Horse, Boom, whatever, as the precursor to a, to a different way that American comics are approached. One that m- more reflects the way manga is produced and approached in Japan. Um, the biggest comic book in the world for the last five years is Saga. Saga is one story told by two people and is a continuation in a singular vision, right? The reason why Things like Batman and Superman and all these things are, are, have such mixed reviews is because they're created by such a mixed people. Um, there are hundreds of people who have worked on Batman, Superman, Spider-Man. Most of the time, they have worked on all three. Uh, in, in some case, not in most, in some cases, they've worked on all three. And so those characters do not have singular visions. It's why somebody like, like Zack Snyder can take the liberties uh, that he has done with the characterization of Batman because so many people have done it in, in the past. Naruto is Naruto. And that vision of that character has not changed because, um, I forget his name. I forget the, the mangaka's name. Um, but he is the person, he is the person who wrote that character from chapter one to the end of its run in 700, 800, whatever. And I think, I think, we, I think Americans latch onto that certain level of long form storytelling. Like, I think you made a great point with Harry Potter. I think we see it with Supernatural, Andy. Oh, where, yeah. Right? Like, fans just, we, we love these two. We don't necessarily care what happens in the story, right? You see that, you saw it with Bleach, you saw it with Naruto, where the ending is just like, like, oh, like, you kind of just jumped the shark here. But since we love the characters, we were willing to latch onto it. Um, I don't think Japanese television shows have that same like live action right they're not approached the same way 
in the West. I think in the West, all our energy is put towards that Aero Flash, I don't know, um, ER, Grey's Anatomy, Supernatural, these shows that are just running for 15, 20 years. That's our, <laughs> you know, this is a weird thing to say. That's our Dragon Ball Z. Well, considering how many times they've died and how many times Goku's died yes, and come back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So interesting conversation in, in anime in the West here. Um, our most popular anime in America series are Dragon Ball Z, Naruto. Historically, you probably have to say Sailor Moon. And right now it's, it's My Hero Academia. Why do we think those are the ones that are? the most famous in the West. If you talk to a child about anime nowadays, you will hear about My Hero Academia. Mm -hmm. Um, If you went to the playground in the early aughts, you, you, you would hear somewhere. I guarantee it. You'd hear Kame. (laughs) Kame. Yeah. You know, like, these were around with kids everywhere. A Pokemon, too. Let's be honest here. Pokemon it belongs to this category, too. I have on very good authority that kids still sit and watch the crap out of Pokemon. Hmm. Pokemon, I think, is a different conversation only because there is so much more to it than the cartoon. Yeah. 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 Uh, and for Attack on Titan, I mean, there was a time about a year where people would be like, you know, I don't, I don't normally like uh, cartoons, but you should check out this really cool thing on Netflix called uh, Titans Attack. <laughs> uh, like, like uh, the it, it just was part of the cultural conversation for a little mm-hmm. while. It, it's yeah. really weird. I, you know, what's funny is that I, I think it's just one of those things that almost like the Matrix, where like. I don't know. I think The Matrix is demonstrably better than Attack on Titan. It's just like something needed to come along that was mildly interesting to the Western conscience, even if it wasn't that good. Like, I don't think Attack on Titan, I think there's a lot of things that aren't good about it. Uh, but it just happened to be um, the, the the thing that started a craze. I think One Punch Man is that good. Uh, and I think and I think it just happened to be the, the next thing here. Um but yeah, kids love, kids love my hero. They they love it. Uh, so let's talk a little bit more here. Uh, we're going a little long. Let's talk a little bit about, um, in terms of anime series, what's easiest to to recommend. I think Andy, I think we need to extend the conversation in another episode, maybe next week, right? Anime yeah, one hundred two, uh, an anime two hundred one. Uh, yeah. No, one hundred two. Yeah, two hundred one means a. Uh, I don't think Second we're getting level. that. Yeah, so it's it's the next class, uh, one hundred two. But let's 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 talk about um, what are the easiest anime series to recommend. And next week we'll get into anime films. Um, in terms of series, I think you have to have that anime manga conversation, which bogged us down in the beginning to to kind of inform people about it. Uh, anime films are a much different beast. We'll talk about those next week. Maybe Andy will watch a couple of Studio Ghibli films. Uh, for those of you who, who know about them. So what's an easy, easily recommendable anime that we have not yet mentioned? Cowboy Bebop. Can you give me a two-sentence okay. synopsis of it? All right. Cowboy Bebop is about a bounty hunter in the near future and just the adventure that adventures that he and his crew go on. Uh, it's 26 episodes long. It's I, – I will – I, I always say this because this is the easiest way to give exactly what it is. I was sold on Firefly because somebody told me it was a live action Cowboy Bebop. Hmm. Yeah. And I think that is accurate. Yeah, that, that's a good point. I, I would agree with you there. Um, if you like Cowboy Bebop, you would also like Samurai Champloo? Absolutely. Uh, which is a hip hop samurai uh, show. Yeah, so Andy, I, this is this might be a little controversial. I have seen all of Cowboy Bebop, but I watched it on Toonami when I was a kid, and I haven't seen it since. Well, Ariel, it is on Hulu right now, so you know maybe you should give it a shot. Yeah, I, I definitely will. 
Um, the thing that I will, I, I think, I think we both know this. I think Full Metal Alchemist is the most easily recommendable anime out there. Uh, absolutely. It is a basic fantasy world that's easy to get into. And easy rules. E- right. Easy rules that the show introduces to you very quickly. I recommend Full Metal, Bro- Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, which is on Netflix. Uh, for the try, you just sit down, give it two or three episodes. If it resonates with you, keep watching. Right, and it's it, and, and right, and if you don't, if it doesn't resonate with you within a within two hours, right, like two or three episodes, just, just don't. Like they they have some heavy hitters in those first couple of episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's also just beautiful action in the fighting and with the magic system. It's great. Yeah. The the cool the, the thing about Full Metal Alchemist that it ties into the, the larger conversation we had today is that the original anime veered off of the original manga run because of time constraints. Yeah. And Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is the true ending to that series, despite it not holding the the same name as the manga. Um, I think it is the superior version. Uh I don't know if you would agree with that, Andy. Uh I I am controversial in that i like the original more okay but i uh i have a friend and we are watching brotherhood together so in a few weeks i might actually have a different opinion have you finished brotherhood oh i i've finished it years ago uh okay. we're just re-watching it you know quarantine uh <laughs> zoom yeah. watching together and screaming about it and this is a friend who does not like anime mm, yeah. uh, i have successfully hooked him on it because brotherhood is just an easy recommend to anyone who who likes uh, magic systems and fantasy. Sure. Sure. I think something that a lot of people in a weird way might not have. Um, maybe, maybe another easy one. Let me ignore that. An easy one to recommend would probably be death note. It's a cat and mouse thriller with a supernatural twist on it. Um, almost a Sherlock Moriarty vibe to it yeah 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 Uh, it's very good yeah very easy to recommend um and the last thing here what is the most popular anime that you've never tried all right uh for me it's anything gundam that's not uh a series called g gundam uh g gundam is kind of the dark horse of the gundam franchise and i won't talk too much about that (laughs) yeah it's, it's certainly uh it's certainly like the, the a different type of uh, vibe than than the rest of them. It's very um, racist. <laughs> <laughs> it is something. Um, I think JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is maybe the biggest anime I've never watched a single episode of. Is it? It's hard to say. Like the average person does not know about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, but an anime fan would. Oh yes. So uh, I, that is one of the like you know as somebody who oh, I, I really like anime blah blah blah. Uh, I've never, I've never tried it. My my, my friends love Food Wars, and uh, it's a little too uh, etchy. By etchy, mm. that that word means like risque. It's a little too risque for me. Um. But yeah, do we need to give homework now that we've mentioned those couple of things? Uh, no, but Ariel, I, I did make a little a little quick game for us to play. Okay. Ariel, uh, so this game I am calling anime or that I pulled out of my. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you a title of an anime and you will tell me if it's a real anime or if it's just some I pulled out of my. Okay. All right. So let's just go ahead and and start. I've got, I've just got 10 titles here, so this will be quick. Okay. (laughs) Okay. My mental choices are completely interfering with my school romantic comedy. Is that an anime or something I made up? Uh, I'm going to call BS on that one. That is a real anime. Oh my God. I knew it. I knew it was too. I knew you would never make up that. I should have said that. Okay, okay, well, let's go with number two, Ariel. Rascal does not dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. 
Rascal does not dream of money girl senpai. Bunny girl senpai. Is that real? That's real, Ariel. Oh my god. It's actually a very touching story about growing up, but But it's a lost in translation type thing. No, it's just a weird name. Okay. Okay. Uh next we have Cautious Hero. The hero is overpowered, but overly cautious. I want to say that one's fake. That one's real. Available oh on U- on Hulu. <laughs> okay. Uh don't you know your video game habit won't give you your first kiss? That one's real. That's a fake. I made Dang that it. up. Man, that seems is... great. <sighs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Next one. A boring world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist. That one's fake. It's real. Oh my god. These are terrible <laughs> names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is why I came up with this, Ariel. Okay. Flower blossoms taste better when not in season. Real? Fake. Oh my god. You're getting me, Andy. I, I am. I'm I'm enjoying this. Okay. Okay. Next up. Th- this should be really easy for you, Ariel. My little sister can't possibly be this cute. Is that one real? That one's real. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yes, and it is what you think it's about, so please don't watch it. (laughs) Okay, two left, two left. No matter how you look at it, it's you guys' fault that I'm not popular. Real. Okay, you got that one right, too? You would have said your guys' fault if it was fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought about that, but oh, well. Last one. Blessings of the goddess give you sweet dance moves. Real. Fake. Oh, man. I thought that one was a little too out there for you to make up. Yeah. Uh, Ariel, you got two right. No. I mean, this is... <laughs> I didn't expect to get a ton right. Um, you mentioned a hot take. What was your hot take? Is that your... Is that oh, your uh... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss uh, next week when we do uh, films. Okay. Great. All right. Um, let's get out of here. If you have a... You know, our homework, Andy, I think would be fair to say to check out one of the, the easiest recommendable ones that we mentioned, Cowboy Bebop, Plymouth Alchemist Brotherhood, or Death Note. Um, but next week we will talk about anime film, so anime 102. Um, we, uh, I will watch at least two Studio Ghibli films in that time frame. Um, but Andy, where can people find you online? You can find me online on Twitter or Letterboxd at Hebrews Pale Ale. You can find me on Twitter at Portly Island Boy. You can find us at Geek101 Podcast on Twitter and Facebook and Patreon. Email us geek101pod at gmail.com. That's all we have for today. Class dismissed.